Engineer, I got a few things to talk about as far not only the bridge. I'm going to bring up a couple other things. And Terry Ward with the, the MnDOT uh, project manager for the bridge project. So maybe before we uh, jump into uh, the bridge, um, first off, I want to apologize for those who showed up last week thinking that we were we were on the first Wednesday. You're you're probably in the audience here. Uh, did, found out that we weren't here. So uh, we kind of did this. We're going to do probably the second Wednesday again in July as well, just to get the uh, 4th of July is uh, on a, the first Wednesday, so just to get that out there. Um, also wanted to mention uh, that I just came from the 3rd and Bush Street project and, um, and we're organizing for the Father's Day car show. Um, it's kind of, uh, we got all the storm sewer in at 3rd and Bush, so we're looking at curb and gutter tomorrow and Friday. And then we'll kind of get that area spruced up to be able to at least get cars through the intersection um, so they can uh, get in their, their car show um, as planned. There's definitely less parking stalls for them to use, but um, they wanted to keep it downtown. So we're making accommodations with our contractor to do that. So I just want to get that plug out there for, for this Sunday for the car show. Come on downtown and see some neat old cars, and they're going to have some construction uh, equipment from and then some maybe some military vehicles too that they're going to stage in the gravel area so it's kind of they're going to use some of that area that's under construction as well so we're doesn't look like it could be used right now but by Friday afternoon or Friday late afternoon we should be in good shape for for the weekend so with that I'll turn it over to Terry to kind of give you what's going on at the bridge Thanks, Jay. So safety again, uh, no lost work time. So that's again a really, a really great accomplishment for our for our team. And be mindful of our uh, construction zone in the Bluff and Third Street area. You know, we're we're right in the heart of the community there. So so far, it's been really, it's really good. We haven't had too many people walking around when we're working around there. But just again, be mindful of that. There's a lot of activity going on. So again, the project we're on schedule. We're on uh, on budget. The river forecast is concerning though. We're looking at the forecast and it's trending upward. There was quite a bit of rain up in northern Minnesota, so it's coming this way. So we're we uh, we're hopeful we can stay in the river with our with our barge operation there. Uh, the new river bridge, as I mentioned before, scheduled to open in October of, of next mm -hmm. year and we're on schedule like I mentioned. So you know all all good stuff there except a little concerning on the river. In terms of traffic, the river crossing again was, is as is, like it will be. Uh, Eisenhower Bridge open at all times. Did some bridge inspections the last few days and we thank the, everyone for their patience there. We're winding down today where we snuck in some patching on the deck. So okay. you know, while the bridge inspection work was going on, the, there was some patching on that deck on the Eisenhower. So we're, we snuck that in at the same time. So hopefully we shouldn't have to come back and, and impact traffic to do any deck type patching work throughout this summer, but we'll monitor that and, and see. Coming up, um, actually tomorrow, we're gonna close down the Potter and Third intersection by Red Wing Shoes there from Thursday through Tuesday, and we got a news release going out for that. So we're gonna start the uh, underground utility work in that intersection. And there's some deep utilities. Yeah, I was there this morning, and, and those utilities need to be deep, not for the businesses needing that depth of service, but to get under the retaining walls that are uh, part of the slip ramp. So our sewer is real deep. We met with Red Wing Shoe this morning to discuss roof leaders and where the sanitary connections are going. So we're just coordinating directly with the businesses that are along that stretch. But it is deep utilities, and, and we need to close that intersection to get those structures in that we need. So. And then if you're watching the progress, we're working towards, uh, on third, towards Plum. And as we get over to Plum, kind of in the queue then will be some traffic phasing or, because um, so, we've got to build into, the, excuse, build into the intersection. So that's kind of queued up. It's out of ways yet, but mm -hmm. as we come get closer to, to Plum, we will have a, a, I'll call it a fairly minor traffic impact in our, in our phasing there as we get into that intersection area for, for our tie-ins with utilities. And it will move traffic on Plum or 58 over, but doesn't, uh, doesn't close 58. We'll still have through traffic. We'll have the intersection open to third going back in, um, you know, into town, but, uh, but there will be impacts with some traffic shifting. Yep. but not a closure so and then we're continuing to watch the traffic operations on highway 61 and we put that protected left in for i'll call it uh, northbound 61 wanting to make a left at that plum or highway 58 and that seems to be working pretty well mm -hmm. we made some changes for southbound 61 
um, in terms of our lane closure and, and, and that operation, and that seems to be working pretty it, well. It's working much better with that, the, the, the way it's shifting. It's still a one lane closure, but it's not the weave type of uh, shifting. So that's uh, heard good things about that. I think, Patty, you noticed it as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Positive yep. feedback on that one. Good, good positive feedback. So a quick construction update. Uh, on the Wisconsin side, uh, the pier cap, the only one remaining on the Wisconsin side is uh, pier number four. So the pier caps for pier three, five, and six are basically completed. The north abutment is completed. We'll get that pier cap for, for number four pier completed here. Then we're, for all practical purposes, in really good shape for setting concrete beams, pre-stressed concrete beams. And those are kind of queued up for um, mid to late July. We've started in the river on our Pier 2 drilled shafts, so today we actually poured the concrete on the first permanent drilled shaft in the okay. river, and it went well. The pour is done with uh, you know, very minor impacts at all, or issues, if you will, with that one. So that, that's really good progress. That one went well for us. So we did a, a, little mini, a little mini concrete pour on the test shafts. We did a technique shaft or a trial run. Finally, we've gotten to the first permanent one, and it, it went really well. So that whole process is kind of the way that works for that sequencing. What's the depth and diameter of that? That's a big one, isn't it, Terry? Yeah, the, the, the four shafts at pier number two are nine feet diameter, and the, the shaft itself is roughly 100 feet from water elevation or 70 feet from kind of the river bottom going down. So it's 70 feet, it'll be 30 feet down from water elevation. So next up, once we get the, the remaining three shafts done at Pier 2, we'll come in and put a big coffer dam. Not, not the mini ones like Piers 3, 4, 5, and 6, but a big coffer dam with sheeting. And then we'll pour a seal and we'll dewater that. And then we'll go down and form up our footing and pour our concrete with those shafts. That ties into those ties shafts. Into those shafts. Yep. Yeah, so that's our foundation for, for that pier. Once we're all done with that, then we'll go over to Pier 1. we got two 10-footers there to put in off of Pier 1, you know, off the, off the levee there. Okay. And those shafts are keyed into the bedrock down that down at that 100 foot depth that, that you drill into the bedrock slightly. Correct, yep, we, put, we, we call it a rock socket. We actually drill into the rock and socket those shafts in, into rock at, at the bottom, so yep. Uh, we'll be going back into Mud Lake soon to work on that box culvert there. So we drove some sheeting. We had to open up that sheeting for flowage because of the um, fish migration or the spawning period. The Wisconsin DNR was requiring restriction in the springtime, which is pretty common. So we're outside that restricted period. We can go back in, put our um, sheeting pieces that we, that we opened up there and get going on that extension that we have to do there. And then on the Wisconsin side, the approach fills, we've got the approach fill built up basically to what we call grading grade. If nothing else, if we didn't have settlement issues, we'd put rock on it and then we're ready to go with pavement. But we have to build a 10 to 12 foot surcharge and that surcharge has to sit for roughly a year. So we're watching the pore pressures in the subsurface conditions and it's not um, sufficient enough to make our geotechnical engineers comfort that, comfortable that we can come in and put our 10 to 12 foot surcharge on there yet. There's too high pore pressures down below in that, I'll call it that mucky type soil that's down there. So we're still playing a waiting game. Again, we gotta come back in, put 10 to 12 more feet on of sand, let that sit for roughly a year. Um, unless things go better in terms of settlement, perhaps we can compress that. Okay. We're not raising the dike, so I've had a lot of people say, hey, are you raising that dike as you, over Mud Lake area in terms of flooding and such? Mm -hmm. And again, I've mentioned several times, we are not raising the, the dike as part of our project. You're matching the grade that's, that was the there grade. prior to the project. Mm -hmm. So then on the Red Wing side, I talked about Pier 1 already. Um, kind of getting over towards the AEM area, we're working on the south abutment. That's in pretty good shape if you've seen that south abutment for the new river bridge come up. Mm -hmm. sure right near bridge. ADM, kind of hanging on the edge of the rock right there. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we're building a retaining wall along the ADM campus. So we're down excavating into rock pretty close to their existing retaining wall. It's going, it's going well. So on the grading side, I talked about Bluff and Third, the utilities that we're doing. Multiple retaining wall work. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of FYI, along ADM we have a, a series of vibration monitors and we haven't picked up much of anything. So we're, we're 
thankful of that. We're probably picking up the trains going by. <laughs> picking up more, we're picking up more vibration from the background, and then the Longbourn Bluff. Yeah. You can some rocks fall down every once in a while. You know, I'll get I'll get a hit on my cell phone. There's a little vibration there, and I'll, my team will go look, and a rock came down or something like that. Sure. So we can yep. pick that up with our with our protocol in terms of monitoring the vibration. Yeah, so. we noticed the same thing with our Main Street job that the background uh, vibrations from the the train was causing more issues at Broad than our actual construction equipment. So, but it's good to track it and make sure we're building it right and and not creating issues for the buildings down there and the tanks and so forth. So I think we got some treats for you today. I hope I hope you'll enjoy what we have. So I thought I'd start with a picture of the past and. Hopefully we're not headed anywhere near this yeah. <laughs> situation yeah. as, uh, as the flows from northern Minnesota come this way. But you know that's where we were not that long ago, just sitting waiting for for the river to go down. And you know, folks that live around here, you've sh sure seen that before. So let's start with some. Drinks. Exposing that because we're all done with that. So here, cap, here, cap three for pier three is basically completed. That was just a quick, quick view of that. And then the next one. Well, this is the drilled shaft operation by Vite. You can see their drilling machine in the back. One more on the bridge side, kind of that same drill shaft operation. A little further along, the cage is on the right, tied up. This is just before they picked up that cage with a crane and dropped it down into the shaft. The shaft is augered out, it's cleaned out, it's tested and accepted from a cleanliness perspective, and uh, we're ready to get that shaft dropped down in there. This was Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. They put that in there and got ready. You can see there's a lot of tanks there. Quite a, quite a nesting of tanks. We Those tanks are there to cycle a slurry into the shaft. To hold the shaft sidewalls competency, we actually cycle a slurry into those drilled shafts, and it takes a lot of tanks to do that. And part of our process is to you know, cycle slurry in there, kind of a polymer, if you will, that puts a little uh, like a spider web on the ex exposed portions of that shaft. So that's why all those tanks are there for that process. It takes a lot of footprint or a lot of room. So let's jump to the grading side. So here's a picture of that fill again over on the Wisconsin side that we're at grading grade. So that's almost the elevation of what, what traffic will be driving on when we're all said and done. But we got 10 to 12 more feet to go on top of that yet for our surcharge. Terry, what's the, um, so the surcharge gets placed and then, um, and then you monitor settlement, make sure the settlement's where you want it before you take that surcharge material off and then that's the contractors to, to take back then the surcharge material and dispose of? Exactly, yeah, so the surcharge is 10 to 12 feet and our geotechnical team will monitor that in pore pressures. Once they get comfortable that it's settled enough and the pore pressures are comfortable and, and, that, and that may be a year, it may be mm -hmm. less than a year, the contractor will come back and excavate that 10 or 12 feet and that's their material. Okay. If there's a place they can use it on the job and it tests for our quality requirements, they can use it on the job. Or, you know, they'll haul it away and perhaps there's another job. Use it in another job, try to coordinate. Yep. yep. They'll maybe bring it to the city and you can use it for sand in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, this is a video of the third and, and plum. We have some conduits that we had to put across there, so we've already trenched partway across. They're doing the, um, we call it ADA compliant pedestrian ramps or sidewalk work. It's quite an operation all by itself. There's a lot of technical details to do it right and do it well. So I uh, just wanted to show you kind of that process of, of that sidewalk or ADA compliant work that was going on.
Here's a view of the finished product in front of Liberty's with the truncated domes around there and all the grades set and matching in and all the, the whole team is over on the other side working on that area. Checking levels, checking elevations, checking the drainage and everything. So it, it's a fairly, again, I mentioned, it's a fairly complicated process and challenging. It, it worked well here. The grades were fairly fairly easy to work with, but you get some severe grades, it can be pretty tough. And nice that uh, Liberty didn't have a corner door right there, because those yeah. always cause trying to get your, your ramps down when you've got entrances that are right up to the corner and yep. making the grades work. So. Yep, and we want to thank Liberty's. We, we put yep. some plywood on their build, on their you know, the restaurant there while we were doing this so we didn't break their windows, and they were very, very accommodating for us. And here's Bluff Street, so if you look, we found about everything you could find from the old um, XL Energy coal gasification campus there. We found some ducts and conduits and contamination. And old piping, and yeah. Old piping, so uh, Jay has been extremely busy with us, helping, working with us, and done a fantastic job. You know, representing Very slow going, but you can see why when you're running into that kind of underground. Yeah. The view kind of the, op the other direction, looking back towards fourth third street direction. That excavation right in front of the video is for the new abutment on the bridge that will serve the backside of Red Wing Shoes, so excavating that abutment for the, if you will. Back of Red Wing Shoes, we, you know, they're letting us use that area for, for staging and storage. For Red Wing Shoes. Here we're grinding off some pa existing pavement markings and then um, you know the next phase will be after this, we'll be to come in and put the new markings in. So I just wanted to show a removal operation on, on Plum or Highway 58. Another utility excavation jumping around. This is looking on 3rd Street. Utilities coming out on Bluff, and now they're starting to head down 3rd Street. They've got their trench there. A fairly deep excavation. So we're checking for contamination and managing the material safety and you know and all those type of aspects of the job. And finally on the grading side, that same area, you can get a little feel for management of that area, the, the material, the soils, all the stuff that's going on, and then panning over to the south abutment on the bridge over Highway 61, which is in pretty good shape right now construction-wise. Good view of uh, Red Wing Shoes' cooperation of letting us basically have that back parking lot for the whole construction here. Here, as you can see, <laughs> we needed it. There's a lot going on with utilities and everything else going to build bridges and and so forth. So, yep, they've good. A, they've been a great partner to work with. Yep. So I wanted to, on the special side, and hopefully you'll find some of these interesting. I wanted to start with a picture of where we were before we started. So you can see some, you know, the buildings there in the forefront that we, that we actually have removed in front of ADM, then their tanks and the trees and the bridge. And on the, on the right side of the picture of, of the Eisenhower, you can see the bluff and the trees and such. So just kind of a look back on where we were before we started in, in that particular area. And then just think about, we've put a temporary bridge in here and we've got a button hook now coming through here. You, know, you don't see all the buildings, but the buildings are gone, billboards are gone, and you know, we've got uh, a lot of uh, equipment that we saw, an excavation, a lot of work going on here. You got a south abutment coming here, you know, the river bridge abutment. So again, just to kind of look back and hey, where, where were we when we started? When I used to have hair. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a picture we found. Um, just a few days ago by ADM, by their retaining wall. And we put it up on Facebook and it got a lot of interest. So I thought I'd show the picture again and just tell you what, what, what this is. So this is a, a foundation for a building that corresponds to a dry cleaning plant of the Red Wing Laundry and Dry Cleaning Company, which appears on maps between 1910 and, and 1917. Mm -hmm. So the building stood, at least our historical team thinks, until about 1943. We just put another picture up today, it's a little hard to see, but of what we think was that building, it's up on our Facebook page, um, back in 1942, an old okay. photo that we found. 
So the bottom line is when we find stuff like this, we've got to check with our historical team, hey, we found this, here's what it is, can we continue on working or you know, do we have to come in with our historical team and do some more excavation and research and document things? And that's just all part of our uh, stewardship, if you will, of the history of Red Wing. Sure. Just to give you a kind of real world example of how our, how our team works. So this one is uh, that same area I showed you the picture of, the video from Soren's Bluff up there. So you can see the button hook and the buildings gone and the temporary bridge, you know, all those trees gone along ADM and cranes are working south of Butman. And I just found my way up there one day and I thought, oh, what the heck, this is a pretty cool view and just took a little video for you. You find that interesting or not, I just thought I'd share that. The traffic flow. Seems like people are, you know, very well accustomed now or to, to going out on 61 to take the button hook to get over to Wisconsin. A couple more. Uh, we've got, let's see, this one, let's see if I can rotate it for you. Not doing so good. This one was a picture, this, this one was a PDF. Not sure I'm going to be able to rotate it, but. PDF of the, some old old historic bridges. You know, it shows the Eisenhower and it shows a pre actually a previous bridge to that. And I'm not finding in this version how to rotate it, so I got to apologize for that. Let me just check this real quick. No, I'll, I won't. I won't spend any more of your time. But we have this, and we'll probably put this up on probably put this up on Facebook again. Sorry, I thought I had it rotated already for you. But it's a 124 pages of the history of the Eisenhower. You know, there's, again, it's sideways, but another view looking the other mm -hmm. way. And we'll probably share again, share this up on Facebook. But here's the best I think I got for today, okay? I think that this is the best I can pull out of my, my, my archives for today, so bear with me. This is from uh, one, of my, one of my MnDOT colleagues that I worked with on the, the historical aspects of Red Wing. And this is from a bridge in northern Minnesota by Baudette from, from years ago. And they had a celebration, if you will, to open the bridge when they built it years ago. So here's a letter in 1960, July 26, 1960. It's to the village clerk in Baudette, Idris Lyons. For the Friday night bridge dedication party, we will need eight quarts of Lord Calver, four <laughs> quarts of Hudson Bay Scotch, three quarts or fifths of gin, any brand but Freshman's, whatever Freshman's is, one quart of vodka. Please have them ready for pickup Friday noon or afternoon, and you can bill the International Bridge Dedication Committee in care of uh, C.O. Stone, whoever C.O. Stone is. Sincerely, Ted Roll Jr. and whoever Ted was at the time. So I don't, I don't know if we'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're doing this. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Yes. Well, thanks for that, Terry. That was great. Um, any questions from the audience? Or th we got some right over here. Okay, and we'll repeat it here so the people okay. on the, in, yep. Um, the second causeway, you still going to put that in to the campground? Yeah, the question was, to make sure I understand it, the second causeway or on the other side on another causeway to remove the Eisenhower Bridge? Yeah. We're not sure um, the Zenith Tech team is going to put that in. They, they have some fingers they can extend off the existing causeway. So right now, um, my best guess, because we haven't formalized the removal plans yet, my best guess is they won't put the second one in because they have sufficient access. Because if you go to that part on your computer or you have each year what you're doing, mm -hmm. when it gets to 2020, it says that road is permanent. And if you go back to 2019, it shows that causeway temporary, going by the color mm -hmm. charts, and I'm just wondering if, if that's going to change. Yeah. So this is in the campground area. Just yeah, it's in the campground area. So, so again, we, we don't have the removal plans yet from the Zenith team. They've, we've had 
you know, other things that we've been working on to get the job going. But my, my speculation, and that's all it is at this point, is we will not build that second downstream causeway to remove the Eisenhower. They'll, they'll put fingers, perhaps, off of the causeway yeah. they have. Yeah, so great question, though. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. I've got another one. Uh, Pier 3, they just took the, uh, the uh, framing off it, or whatever you call it. Yep. Why, why is it green and the other ones, when they took them off, or white or gray, the cement. Yeah, it's the, the it's not uncommon for there to be green in there, and it has to do with the composition of the aggregates and the you know from the ready mix plant and the and the ingredients, if you will, that that goes in there. So that so that concrete pour looked different th yeah. on that. Yeah, it looks but a it, little it looks a little different, and and a little bit of, of background on that. We actually switch mixes. So just a little different mix, just a little different ingredients, and it can cause that. Will it fade away, or does it stay green? We'll, we'll actually put a surface coloring on it. Oh, we call okay. it a special surface finish, and you'll never see it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, all, all, of the, all of the piers will have that special surface and basically painted to the same color. So yep. even though the concrete came out a little different color, when it's all said and done, they'll look, yep. they'll look the same. So it's raw concrete now. We'll, again, we'll, we'll touch it up, put um, any holes in there, we'll fill those in, make sure it's smooth, texture-wise, grind any roughnesses from the forming that they put up there, and then we'll put on what we call a special surface finish, uh, a texture, if you will, like a sand texture that'll have a color to it, and that'll yep. be the finished product. Correct. Yep. Great, great question. Patty, anything that you've got? Um, the main thing we heard a lot this week was the inspections, you know, on the slowdowns and the yep. traffic flow. Uh, but you said as of today, no, that should be pretty well done with the patching and the. I know the flagging sign was still out today, but there weren't flaggers there. Was it not? Yeah, the question from Patty was, you know, really about the, the traffic on the Eisenhower. And today the, the, the plan was to finish up the bridge inspections from our MnDOT inspection team, finish up our patching of the deck, and it may be done already. I'm, I'm fairly confident it will be done today. The hope moving forward is we don't have to have any similar operations out there to work, you know, do patching on the deck or anything. That doesn't mean that we won't have periodic flagging for permanent elements that come to the project for construction, but I don't anticipate day-long flagging operations okay. for the rest of this summer like we had for the inspections. So the, the inspection, uh, the Eisenhower's on an annual inspection basis, right? And that's been, so this was, of course, we'd noticed this years before we ever had a bridge project. We remember, okay, it's inspection day, and there'd be a day or two of, of them doing that uh, annually. And um, they'll have to do that again in 19 as well to check the bridge. I don't know that in, how in depth they are if they change what they need to do operational wise each year. But yeah, well, what we've been doing on the Eisenhower lately is an annual what we call a fracture critical inspection. It's a very in depth inspection. So that we believe this was the last fracture critical inspection of the Eisenhower bridge. Next year, our bridge inspection staff may come back. If they do, it'll likely be a much more um, cursory type review, if you will, not an in-depth, thorough, fracture critical review. Okay. I've talked to them already just to get a feel for what could happen next year. And then again, um, switch traffic by October, traffic's off the bridge, and then it's the takedown or removal phase that we get into next year. Yeah. Yep. And then when the traffic's on the, um, the new river crossing, of course, that bridge will get on its own cycle of inspections and there'll be impacts during those inspections. Probably not the same with, with a wider, we have shoulders now that snooper trucks can sit off to the side. There'll be a different operation with the new bridge. We have more room on that deck to be able to get the, their, their uh, equipment up there and not impact traffic as much. And hopefully. that should be every two years because that bridge is not, the new bridge is not fracture critical. So they'll move that to a two year yeah, uh, likely, cycle. Likely a two year cycle. Okay. And Patty, if I could give you a, um, you know, a little bit of talk about your tours that you're kicking off. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. I was going yeah. to hope we mentioned those. Yes. Today. Yes. Yeah, yeah um, Patty got a hold of us, and we're in the tour season again yeah. now, right? So uh, so we're excited with that. And I, I don't know if the times were confirmed. Are they confirmed for 11 o'clock uh, next Thursday yeah. is the first one? 21st, yep. 11, and that will be the Minnesota side. 
Minnesota the Minnesota side, and we're meeting at the third and um, third and Bush uh, or third and Plum parking lot right there, the mural parking lot for the Minnesota one. Yep. And then June 26th at 1 p.m. and that's going to be the Wisconsin side. Okay. So we'll meet at the Harbor parking lot. June 26th at 1, 1 p.m. at the Harbor Bar yes. parking lot and, and take a look at the Wisconsin operation. So Terry, I've been organized wise, we're kind of thinking the first one will be the Minnesota kind of stuff going on, the utility, a lot to look at down in that area. And then uh, the, the next one would be the Wisconsin side work. So. And, I, and I think it's appropriate if people want to do both, right? They can, Absolutely. if they want to do sure. the Minnesota side and then get a Wisconsin side, that I think that's appropriate and Patty kind of Acknowledges that that's fine. Yeah, and you'll be hand, Patty. You'll be handling the um, the reservation. The reservation. So to, get, to 25. So. so get down to the chamber and and get registered for the tour. And uh, yep, unlimited to 25 for for each each of those days. Get another question. Our, this is the last one. <laughs> one more question. <laughs> when, when, when they get to the the big steel beams or whatever do you have any kind of a time frame for when that'll happen and how are they going to put those last ones up out in the mainstream up there yeah the question was the uh, um, steel tubs i call them there's for <clears throat> for the new river bridge from the south abutment over to pier three so from the south abutment to pier one pier one to pier two pier two to pier three there's three runs or three lines of big steel tubs that we're, we're going to have to erect for, for the, the superstructure, if you will, of, of the bridge. The question was, um, well, one of the questions was, do we have an idea how they're going to get to the project? And the contractor's still thinking about that, Zenitech and their team. So that's a challenge all by yeah. itself. How do you get those? And then think about how do you get them by ADM, that south abutment side, because if you got them on a truck, that portal of the Eisenhower is not that big. So it'll be interesting. Their uh, their team is still kind of looking at that, you know, how the answer to that question. Uh, but in terms of of how are they going to erect the span? So first of all, if I start at the south abutment, they're going to get that up by the those tubs up on top by the ADM, and they're going to launch them to Pier One on top. They're going to push them or cantilever them out over the top of the railroad tracks because we can't shut down the railroad tracks. We can't have cranes down below sitting on the tracks and picking those steel tubs from the levee and then moving them over and putting it in place. The railroad will not let us do that. So it's the first time that MnDOT has done that in the state of Minnesota on a MnDOT job. We're going to what we call launch those tubs or push them from land by ADM out to Pier 1. How about from 1 to 2? Yeah, so from, from 1 to 2, it looks like they're going to put a temporary pile bent in the river and then piece them together as they put them up, shorter sections, and then put them together or anchor them together. So on, so, so bear with me for a second. So on the south abutment to Pier 1, they can put it all together and push it out. It comes in sections, so they gotta bolt it together. So they can put it together and push it out. Between Pier 1 and Pier 2, they'll have to put it up kind of in sections and then bolt it together as it's, as it's up uh, in the air. So. Think of a temporary pier. Yeah, the temporary pile bent is basically they're creating a temporary pier. A temporary river, driving something into hole. Yeah. Yep. So the the um, the access that they were planning to build into the river, they had temporary piling for their trestle. You know, you can just think of temporary a temporary pier. That's that's why it's so critical that we get going on these drill shaft operations get up and out of the water with piers one and two because we can only put that temporary pile in the river outside of the navigational season. We can't do that during the navigational season. And as a team, we understand if we miss that window of time this fall and winter season of getting that temporary pier out there and getting those tubs up on the, on the new piers, we've lost a whole year. It's, that's, and we understand that as a team. So that's our, that's our goal as a team. Let's get going and let's get those new piers up and out of the way so we can get that navigational channel window to get that temporary pier out there and get those tubs erected. And then get that temporary pier out of there for the next navigation season. The Coast yep. Guard will only allow us to have anything in the river for that 
through that winter time and fall and winter. And then between two and three, you may see a temporary pile vent in there as well. We haven't seen those plans yet for erecting the tubs, but that's what we're, we're predicting will happen. Does that help? Does that answer those? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the questions. I'll give you one more if you got one more. <laughs> How about Nancy? You got anything, Nancy? I'll talk to you after. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I think uh, that was a good, good update. And we're, again, we're uh, on July, what, uh, July? 11th. 11th will be the next one. July 11th. So um, look forward to seeing you back here. Thank you very much.